It's me, it's me, it's Brandon T here, it's Painting with Magic, and today I thought we'd do something a little different. I got three cameras running today instead of our normal two, and though you might be able to see what we're doing here on the palette a little bit more. What I have here is a 16 by 20 canvas, and I've got it covered in some black canvas seal, some of my signature black canvas seal. And what this does is makes this, ca this canvas uh, black so we can uh, really show the colors on it. Now normally, we'd usually it would put some amazing clear medium on the canvas. Okay, this is my new non-toxic clear. But today we're not going to put any clear on this. We're going to leave it dry for the majority of the painting because we're going to be painting a rose today. I've got many questions on my Facebook page, Twitter, and all those things about painting flowers. So that we do a rose. So the colors we're going to use today, we'll go down to the palette now. And the colors we're using today will be a lizard crimson, titanium white, cadmium orange, and cadmium red light. Uh, those should be the only colors and some sap green up here. Uh, we'll need some sap green as well for this rose painting. So let's go ahead and let's get started in it. Let's take some with a number 10 synthetic flat brush. You can also use a number 8 depending on the size as long as it's synthetic. Okay, and we'll go up here to the canvas now. Now I want to do is I want to draw a plus sign where I want my big rose to be. Okay, see that plus sign? Right, and that's where our big rolls will be. There's usually a rule of three where you have three bars. Imagine three bars. You want things sitting on those two bars of your canvas. Okay, so we're going to have that. Then we're going to make our circle. Start your top one, and we'll circle it around. Making a circle shape. See that? So now we got a circle. And then just fill that circle in with your amazing uh, Elysian Crimson. Okay, and we're going to leave it dry because... Uh, we need this stuff to be as grippy as possible. A lot of people when they're doing flowers, uh, they'll use either Amazing White or Clear or they may use the black on the background and they wonder why their flowers turn to mud really quickly. Okay, And there will be the first rose. And then we'll just grab a little bit more crimson. <clears throat> then we're going to start making the petal shapes. Uh, the main rose petals. You'll start seeing the petals come out. So see there? We'll start making the petals. And I'm still using that number 10 synthetic flat brush. The same old flat brush. So we're basically making this look like a flower shape already. See that? There we go. And this one was posted on Facebook. I got a lot of questions on it. We'll try to answer those questions today as best as possible. Okay, so once you get the flower shape, the ma majority of this flower shape going, uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to make a rosebud. The way I make my rosebuds. And then you're going to see my version of roses and things like that. We're going to use the same brush. I load it up to a chiseled edge with the Elizabeth Crimson. And to, so let's go up here to where I want to put a rosebud. I take the brush straight on. I kind of come in and I go out and I push over and then I kind of come back up with it again. See that? Rosebuds kind of have a big round bottom. Kind of like that. Okay? I kind of fill those up a little bit. Alright. Okay, there you have one rosebud. Maybe we'll add another one. Usually you want about three things with flowers. Maybe we'll add another one kind of out here. So I might push down as you go firmer, push it in, and bring it back out. You kind of pull it up like that. See that? Real basic rosebud. And some people just, when you first started, you maybe just want to start with rosebuds to get you going. Okay, so we'll go back down to the palette again. Let's take some sap green and mix it right in with the Elysian Crimson. And this is going to make a very natural shadow tone because uh, crimson or red and green are complementary colors on the color wheel. So they automatically will make a nat natural green or a shadow color for the other color. So we'll take a little more crimson with that. And basically we're making a brown. Okay. And that should be all we need of that right there. The next thing I'm going to do is wipe out my 
number 10 synthetic flat brush. Make sure it's synthetic. Uh, they just have a nice bounce to them. They get to a razor sharp edge. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is start making the stems. So I'm going to take some sap green and a touch of that rose color I was already using. It has a little green already in it. Okay, yeah, let's go I'm right back up here. I'm going to use this brush this way and just kind of pull it over. Hope you can see. See that? Rose stems are kind of chunky, they're like they're like wood almost. And kind of pull it on. Okay, I'm not making it nice and razor sharp. I'm kind of making a little jagged. Bring it all the way down. A bit more color. And we can say on this one, same way. Kind of pull it all into one general area. Mix back up some more paint. A little bit more lizard crimson into that. <clears throat> and we could say, well, well, maybe there's a, a petal on this. The stem on this is a little bit like that. Okay. Something. So you see how the stems are all going in the one direction. All going down. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, just use the same brush again. Keep going with that same brush. While we got it in our hands. It's still dirty. And what we're going to do here is put the little leaves that the rose petal is setting in. So we're going over here. And you kind of want to start out a little bit curling the brush in. With one tip of the corner. And push it down into it. Okay, once you kind of got the shape going, it'd be a little easier for you to do it. Okay, and then same on this. Make sure you're curling it into it. See that? Super easy. It really is. Really easy to paint rose buds. They're really fun to do. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and make some leaves going on these stems. The leaves are going to be really simple. The kind of leaves that I do is real simple to do. We're going to come, kind of go out, push in, and then twist it. Give it a little tiny twist. I sure hope you can see all those things here where we're using a black canvas. Sometimes it's hard to see until we part the highlights on. See that? There's another little one. Okay, maybe. Now it's always good to make things roll over top of stems to give them more of a realistic look. See that? Okay. Then down here we'll put a, we'll make sure we got the little leaf is setting into. Back to that green. There's a tiny little touch of crimson or just to brown it down a little bit. Then we put a little another couple more little leaves on them. Okay, and then the big one, a little bit thicker, a little bit more. They're very fun to do. They're really quick to do, too, these leaves. Usually, the faster you go, the lot easier it will be. See, I'm pushing it in, and I give it a little twist. Okay, I put a little sharp point on it. Okay, okay, let's go ahead and start highlighting these, these stems and these leaves and things. And I like to make almost like an emerald green or like a minty green color. So what we'll do is we'll take titanium white. We'll mix it right into this green we're already using, sap green with a little touch of crimson. Okay? And hopefully it'll stick. I'm just going to come up here and just put a little tiny bit up. See how very sharp that is already? It really pops it. And then we'll just give it a tiny touch on the stem, not too much. Just a little bit goes down the stem. Kind of a touch there, a touch there. And then we'll just give it a little right there on that on that leaf. Well, on that one, you don't want to really hit all the leaves, but because they really look good. But you really kind of want to hit this. So you gotta make sure you kind of hit those overlapping. Well, anytime you got any overlapping, yeah, how that's what brings it out. Now we're gonna go a little bit below because there's gonna be a shadow on that stupid <coughs> big flower. And maybe we'll give a little highlight on this one right there. 
Maybe a little bit more of a highlight on the back end there. Kind of hit and miss it. There'll be some highlights going on on it. Now we're, this is the easy part of this whole entire painting is putting on these little stems and things in there. So enjoy it while you got it going easy for you. There could be a little tiny bit going on up here. No, let's wipe out the brush. Then I'm going to clean this brush and I'm washing this in some baby oil. Now baby oil will wash your brushes really nicely. Uh, there are many different things you can use to wash your oil painting brushes. And baby oil is a really good one to use too. And now we're going to go ahead and soften this down because right now it looks really too harsh. So we'll use that same brush and we'll kind of soften it down into it. It gives a little bit more of a natural look. I know it's not going to look too natural because that's too bright of a green, but art's not all about making something look as realistic as possible because of decorations and things. To me, I like my flowers and things like that to have all these uh, colors in them, especially green. I really love green. But you can make yours look as natural or whatever you want to do. You can even put little dew drops on them if you wanted to. Little water droplets. And all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of touching it and kind of pulling that light green into the darker green. Just to soften it down a little bit. You can even use a mop brush if you have one. Nice soft mop brush. Mop brush is always nice to use on it. Okay. There we go. You see how this really comes together now. Now we're going to get to the fun part. And then if you uh, haven't done these before, this is kind of a little easier way of doing it. How I lay mine out. So let's go ahead and let's take some a tiny bit of titanium white. Hope you can see. I'll go over here. And we'll take the cadmium red. Now when you're wanting to do a a red rose, you want to use reds, everything red. You don't want to add any white to it. I added a tiny little touch of white, that way it'll make it more opaque. Just a tiny little bit, see it's still very red. Okay, I'll lower it up to a sharp point. Okay. And we'll do the little rose buds first, that way it's a little easier on you. See how I just tiny touch that a little bit? Yeah, on this side. Kind of right on that. A bit like that. You can kind of see the what's going on on it. Kind of get those edges. Then you'll make sure you always get these inner sides. The way you can kind of see everything. That looks a little rough again, but we're always going to blend. You're always going to blend it down. Softer. Sometimes you can even use a fan brush to get in here and kind of pull them out a little bit more. Because rosebuds don't really have much going on on them. Okay. They're just a simple little way of doing them. And then just reload your brush. And we're going to use one little corner of the brush. We're just going to do some droplet dabs in there. Oh, it looks like there's some petals that's clustered inside of it. Nice little rose buds. Now it's time to get to the big rose. Now you can do these in any colors that you want to do them in. You can do pink roses. You can do um, yellow roses. Let's go ahead and do this right here. We're going to go on the outside edges and pull them in. See that? I'm just using the, the cadmium red. I'm just touching it from the outside and pulling it in. This is the easy part. Make sure you get those little, could give it that more of that rosy look here. Roses kind of have a pointy petal. So you kind of want to give them that look, that characteristic look of a 
kind of pointing in. See that kind of goes pointy there a little bit. Okay, now that's the easy, easy part of this. Next thing we're going to do is do some a little curl strokes, kind of like a U almost, but um, not as gone. So we're going to go from the outside and start bringing these in. On this side. Now, right now it looks a little rough, but we're going to start bringing it all together. It depends on what kind of angle you're looking at the rows. I'm kind of looking at it off to the, uh, you're looking up at it in that direction. Okay. Use those nice inner layers. Okay. Then we're going to do these little um, stabs, little dabs. Kind of take your brush and just kind of poke it in there. Make some of these little dabaroos and then we'll bring these little tighter inner circle parts in. See how it starts to bring it together now? Okay, and that's kind of like your inner sides. And this is just our second color. We're going to bring in some more. Maybe we'll bring it out a little bit more there. This is just our first tone. And then we'll bring in another little petal or two in there. Something about like that. Okay, then I kind of wipe off the brush a little bit. You can pull out the paint if you want to. A little tiny touch of titanium white. Then we're going to go into the orange. There's still some red in this brush. Maybe a little touch more red in it. Okay. Then we'll come here and decide where we want to really pop off here. See how it's popping there? Maybe more titanium white with that one. And more orange in it. Okay. It's kind of where we get to more, a little more finer with it. Kind of restart making it look, it looks more beefier this way. And then so I always give it a couple little dabs. Just kind of load it flat out and kind of give it a little bit of a dab up. You can just touch. You now look, some of these petals are a little bit curled inside there. Then you can give it on your outside just a tiny bit. And then down here. So I want that line to kind of shine from the right side, but you can make your own uh, little <clears throat> configurations of what you want it to be. Okay, that's pretty much how I do my roses. Uh, we can give a little bit more on these little rose buds. Okay, now you're going to look from look out from the outside of it. I may take some more red in here. Pop a little bit down there. Down there too. And then I might just go back in and add a little, few little darker little strokes. And some people, sometimes you call them like the eyebrow strokes. Some people call them that because they kind of look like eyebrows. I'll take some lizard crimson again. And I'll go back up here and I'm going to put a few of these little ones in here. But it kind of breaks it up. It gives it more of a layer or two. I kind of go back and forth give it a little bit of a push up. Okay. Maybe over here a little bit. I'm going to kind of see the layers a little bit more. Looks a little bit better that way. Okay. And then down here at the base, I'm going to take a one inch brush. And I'm just going to blur it out a little bit. And I'll take that old fan brush we was using, grab a little touch of green, 
I'm going to kind of put a little bit of this in the background. Kind of give you something in the background going on. It's best to put some of the color that's going on in the painting. Okay. Now I'll just kind of blur it out a little bit with this one inch brush. Now whenever you see these, you're going to see the matteness of the canvas seal. And then you'll see the shininess of the oil. And what you can do is, when it's all dry, you can put a uh, thin coat of some, when it's really dry, you can put a little thin coat of Amazing Clear over top of it. And then when it dries, it might make it look more evener. Or you can just wait and let it, and then varnish it later on. But that's pretty much it. I may uh, check and see what uh, we can do else here real quick. I had a lot of questions on making some uh, baby breasts on here. And the painting that we posted on, that I posted on to Facebook, we made some of those. So we're going to try to make a few look real quick. So I'm going to take some Amazing Clear. I have an old bottle here I'm going to use. Just some Amazing Clear Medium. And I'm going to get a little bit out. And we're going to use some mixture between the sap green and the sap green with a little time titanium white with it. And you want to roll it up to a nice sharp point. It's a number two script liner. Okay. You can see it a little better. And we're going to come in here and make some little um, stems and things. Hope I got time to throw a few little. baby breasts in here for you because it just makes a nice classic rose painting when you, if you can. There's different ways of doing it. Okay. Okay. Then I'll wash that old liner brush out. Then I'm going to thin down some titanium white. Using some of the amazing clear medium okay and then making them are just a bunch of little dabs okay a bunch of little dabs they go on for the little baby breasts and it's gonna take on and on and on a good while to make these little baby breasts it's a lot patience will go a long way for these so if you don't have much patience there's another way to do them as well. This will give you the more better effect of doing your uh, rosebuds. There's a, a little baby breasts. So we'll go over to another way of doing them with a fan brush. Maybe some thicker titanium white. Kind of make it a little smoother. And you can take the corner of the bottom of it. You can do some dabs this way too. Now it's not going to look as good as the dabs. You can see the differences. You can see the differences there. I'll show you kind of both ways. You can see if you take one corner and you push it inwards. See that? That's like the quick way of making little baby breaths. But you can see this one here looks a lot better when you're using the liner brush to make all these little dabs. Okay. Now, I know you've all seen little baby breasts before, so. You make these little vines, they kind of go in there. Okay, I'm not sure how much time I've got left on this episode. Okay, so I'll try to do them as quick as possible. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the one that I've done and I posted on Facebook. So you can kind of see what we're kind of going or looking off of the original one. You see all these little baby breasts in there and how I've done those. And I've done them all with a little liner brush. I sit down, you take your time with it and just really dab the crap out of it to make these little little dots. Okay, you see how these look a lot better than um, doing it with the fan brush. These little dots, these just a bunch of little dots in a row will get you that effect of these baby breasts. Okay? 
So we're going to try and finish this one up with some more of those little baby breaths for you. Okay. But just take your time. And do this little baby breath. So the, the, the fan brush could give you a starting point. And you can just come in here and just detail it with the with the uh, liner brush. I'm just doing a bunch of little dabs, guys. Bunch and a bunch of little dabs. Okay. So I think that there will be. Okay, so we're just trying to continue on as adding as many of these as possible as I can in here. I'm not sure exactly how much time we can do these for on here. But anyways, you'll get the idea that we don't have a lot more time to finish up your painting and put as many as little um, baby breaths as you want in yours. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually go ahead and sign mine. I think this one here is pretty much as finished as best I'm going to be able to get it for you. I'm going to take some of that green we use and I'm going to sign this one. Alright, I hope you liked this show today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to paint a rose. <clears throat> this one's more of a simpler style, I think, of painting roses. Um, and I think you will enjoy it, and I think you'll get a lot from it. So, I hope you subscribe, like, and favorite these videos, and share them with everyone you know. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Google+. We're on about everything now. So, this one's ready for an art gallery. Sorry, So is yours, and I'll see you real soon.